Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Removal Sanity, and today I'm reviewing Metal Gear Master Collection Volume 1 of the Series X, developed and published by Konami. The Metal Gear Master Collection Volume 1 is a collection of Metal Gear series well known for its pioneering stealth action with live action footage, cinematic cutscenes, and innovative gameplay. The premise is you take on various iterations of Snake depending on which game you play. The collection boasts Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2, Sons of Liberty, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater, exclusive digital screenplay books and master books, plus NES versions of Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2. First up is accessibility. With regards to accessibility, there is button remapping in the key config menu. Subtitle options are only on and off and provide no color variations. Sound options are equally limited, so should you have sound, visual or motor issues, this collection would not be for you. Next is gameplay. The aim of the collection is to provide the very best version of each of the games to fans and introduce the award winning franchise to those that may have not played them yet. Being that this is only volume 1, this only picks up the first three games of the series. First thing you should know when downloading the collection is the game themselves are not under one game launch screen. Each of the main games have been accessed under their own tab with the exception of the 1989 and 1990 NES versions which have been put in a separate package. Whilst this may be a little disappointing for some, there is a reason, at least in regards to the first Metal Gear, which when starting you can find the original game, the VR missions that were only available in North America, the European versions of those VR missions and Metal Gear Solid Integral. For those new to the franchise, I would recommend starting off with Metal Gear, regardless of how the control system has aged. This will be the best way to experience and understand the franchise and truly marvel at what a wonder this was when it first came out. Now I own all three of these on the original systems they came out in, but it's always nice to have it on one system ready to play at my fingers, knowing this also helps with game preservation. And yes, there is a physical version of the collection for those like myself who have concerns over digital media in the long term and consumer rights. In Metal Gear, released in 1998, you were introduced to Solid Snake, and it's the year 2005. A terrorist group called Foxhound and their next generation special forces rebel against the US government during a routine training mission on a remote nuclear disposal facility. They demand the remains of legendary mercenary Big Boss. Military Chief Roy Campbell calls Solid Snake out of retirement once more to infiltrate the stronghold and rescue DARPA Chief Don Anson and Arms Tech President Kenneth Baker and find out if the terrorists have the capability of firing a nuclear missile, which is then confirmed as true thanks to a secret project called Metal Gear Rex. You will meet some very unique enemies before a final climactic battle with their leader. The next in the series is Metal Gear 2 Sons of Liberty, released in the year 2001. Information has been leaked about the Marines' new Metal Gear Ray to combat the overabundance of Metal Gears. So, in response, Otacon assigns our Solid Snake to take photographic evidence, but things take a serious twist. Two years later, in 2009, the Sons of Liberty terrorists, led by a man calling himself Solid Snake, take over the Big Shell, as US President James Johnson is taking a tour of the facility. In response, new Foxhound Agent Raiden is sent in to eliminate the terrorist threat. Like its predecessor, you will again go through twists and turns, meeting some outrageous characters before the ending battle. For me, this was my favourite of the three, if only for the character Vamp, whose battle and general atmosphere is superb. The game introduced an upgraded control system and the introduction of first-person shooting.
And finally, what is deemed by some to be the best of the franchise, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, which released in the year 2004. After the Second World War, the world was split into two and began the Cold War. In the year 1964, Fox operative Naked Snake is sent to Selenarsk in a mission to rescue a defecting Russian scientist whilst working on the Shagahod, a terrifying weapon that's capable of launching a nuke from anywhere. But his mentor, the boss, interferes and defects to the Soviet Union. One week later, Naked Snake is sent back to Selenarsk once again to defeat the members of the Cobra unit destroy the Shagahod and to kill the boss. Being set prior to the previous games it changed things up and allowed for a more realistic setting. The game also added a true camouflage system, wildlife eating system and a new isometric camera option to help out when sneaking. The bonus content, as mentioned before, is the NES version of Metal Gear, which, like 1999 version, sees you as Snake sent into an enemy military base to destroy a secret weapon from being created. Gameplay-wise, unlike its more recent iterations, it plays out in a fairly non-linear format that has you collecting specific items to allow further exploration of the base. For Metal Gear 2, world is running out of oil, and a biologist comes up with an alternative fuel source and is promptly kidnapped. Solid Snake is called in again to rectify this issue, and with this sequel, they have added the new ability to crawl. Unlike the first game, Snake can now pick up landmines, move over noisy terrain silently, and evade enemies by crawling under tables and trucks. For retro fans and historic fans, having these as part of the package not only allows you to play history, but see Hideo Kojima's style and influence emerging. Besides the games, there is also a plethora of extra non-gaming content, like its digital screenplay books and master books, showcasing off comics, sketches, lore and even scripts. This is where Konami did hit the nail on the head, and it's a perfect accessory to any Metal Gear's fans. Each game plays well, and in terms of glitches, I could spot little during my playthroughs. Being able to jump back into these games again under one system is a godsend, and for me at least, brought me back some much needed nostalgia. It really shows how far we have come, but also how certain visual and gameplay mechanics we take advantage of, at least in the stealth genre. If you want to see where all this started and evolved from, this is the best way to understand and engage with it. Next up is graphics. Each game's graphical fidelity is different, and this was cause of contention when the collection first released, as it failed to meet the promises the team had suggested. Now, some patches have addressed some of these complaints with more incoming. Whilst the original ethos of keeping as much of the original content as possible is good, other remasters do provide options to switch between the upgraded and original, like the recent Tomb Raider remastered collection. Metal Gear Solid is 240p and uses a 4x3 ratio as its original 30 frames per second, with customizable borders to fill in the gaps on your TV. You can get the game to run at 60 frames per second, but you'll need to download the American version in order to get it to do it, as the European version is fixed at 30 frames per second, so it could work with the 50Hz TVs of the time. This can be found under the download category in options, and when starting the game we'll need to pick the US version. I did notice huge lag when transitioning in and out of the codex, which was never on the original, so clearly this needs a bit more work. Sons of Liberty and Snake Eater meanwhile sport a 720p upscaled to a 1080p resolution and runs at 60 frames per second. These two do play smoothly now, and the visual jump from Metal Gear Solid to Sons of Liberty is still shocking as when I first played it.
For those new to the franchise, this may look dated, but this all soon gets put to bed the moment the action starts and you are knee deep in mud or hiding in a locker ready to pounce out at some unsuspecting guard. They have also added to all games some quality of life improvements, like you can now pause cutscenes and you can also open a menu where you can update options and switch controller ports, imperative for one of the boss battles in Metal Gear. Finally is sound. Thankfully, when it comes to the music, sound and voice work, everything is fantastic. Hearing David Hayter as Snake will never get old it was a real bugbear for me when he wasn't allowed to continue in Metal Gear 5. What do you want from me? I just invited you here so we could have a talk. Don't move a muscle. What the? Sorry if they were in I can't tell you how much joy it brings me to hear the music from Konami's in-house musicians that produce some of the best tracks you'll ever listen to. The music ranges from brooding choruses, rustic synths and electronic beats that ooze tensions and subtlety. The music spars between heroic and foreboding, depending on the scene, and will often go from a slow crawl to high intensity in a matter of seconds. Those who remember the boss ending of Snake Eater will definitely know what I mean. And for those that haven't played it, you're in for a real treat. In terms of recommendation, a good quality headset or soundbar. It doesn't matter as long as you get something good to listen to the amazing quality on offer here. And this leads me on to the rating of the game. Now I rate games in order of avoid, on sale, great purchase and must own. My rating for Metal Gear Master Collection Volume 1 is on sale. Putting aside the graphical issues, each of the games play superb, but are pretty much replicas of Bluepoint Games HD version back in 2011. Konami has actually come out and confirmed they are not happy with the package and recently promised 4K versions where possible to the collection, which has already been made possible by modders on PC. The next big issue is the game's hefty price tag in relation to those quirks and some will bulk at when looking into purchasing. Thankfully, you can purchase the collection's physical edition on Amazon for half of what's been touted on digital storefronts, which I would recommend you do. The game is currently priced on Xbox for £49.99 or approximately $60 and depending on your skill and patience would give you well over 100 plus hours worth of gameplay. Combine this with the VR missions, hidden game secrets for playing through the games multiple times alongside the bonus content and you could easily treble that. Is this the very best version of the games for fans to enjoy? No. That hefty price tag and missed visual promises will put some gamers off. But if you can pick this up for a reduced price than the digital stores are stating, I would recommend this purchase. There is a huge amount of content here, and the developers have stated they will keep their promises of upgrading visuals. Will they do it? Only time will tell. But right now, grab it on sale. Well ladies and gentlemen, that's it. I do hope you like this review, and if you do, please like, share, and subscribe if you so wish. And if you would like to put some notes, or even just a comment in the comment section, I do like reading them. Anyway, have a great time gaming, and I'll see you all again soon.